Are you guys ready for more stupidity out of Simulu? Cause I sure am. <laughs> Monkeys, roll the footage. Yeah, that, that oh, works. I like All it. right. Okay. All right, move. <laughs> moving on. Hey, what about Tula? I haven't said that in a while. been a minute since we've talked about you. Jesus, I didn't even mean to rhyme. Liar! How you doing everybody? Etep Wakui and welcome to the new subscribers. However you found us, we are glad you're here. And if you're finding us for the first time, hey, why don't you do yourself and me a favor? Hit that subscribe button. Ding the bell for notifications so you know when we go live for one of our three weekly live streams Five, if you're a channel member, that's right, channel members get a live stream on Monday and Wednesday night before the big shows. And tomorrow is Thanksgiving, so we're going to do a we're gonna do a morning, uh, about an hour Lions pregame stream tomorrow. Just have some fun. I call it a lot because I'm getting ready to watch the Lions lose on Thanksgiving. But, ladies and gentlemen, we're not here to talk about me shoving turkeys up my ass or the Lions losing or anything like that. We're here to talk about Simu Lu. Oh, ho, ho. Apparently, can't keep his head out of his ass or his foot out of his mouth because Shang-Chi star Simu Liu dismisses Quentin Tarantino and Martin Scorsese as racist gatekeepers because, of course, he did because it's Simu Liu, so virtuous, so virtuous. For their criticism of the MCU, the golden age of Hollywood was white as hell. Come on. Not one to let an opportunity to embarrass himself pass by. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings star Simu Liu has dismissed the criticisms criticism of Marvel Cinematic Universe by veritably esteemed Hollywood directors Quentin Tarantino and Martin Scorsese is nothing more than racist gatekeeping. I've never once... If, if anybody wants to show me a more progressive uh, director than Quentin Tarantino, I'm all ears. Uh, have you seen Django Unchained? I, I mean... Have you seen the guy's movies? He always puts women and minorities in important roles in them. And not in a pandering way, in a way where it makes sense to the storyline. Do you feel me? Simu Lu, on the other hand... Oh, ho, ho, ho. As many already know, whether through listening to the director himself or the unhinged ranting of those who are unable to fathom the idea that Thor Love and Thunder is not high art, Scorsese is far from the biggest fan of the MCU. Speaking to the topic during an interview with Empire Magazine in 2019, the Wolf of Wall Street director explained, I don't see them. I tried, you know, but that's not cinema. Honestly, the closest I can think of them, as well made as they are, with actors doing the best they can under the circumstances, is theme parks, he opined. It isn't the cinema of human beings trying to convey emotional, psychological experiences to another human being. Expanding on his opinion in an op-ed for the New York Times, Scorsese opined, many of the elements that define cinema as I know it are there in Marvel Pictures. What's not there is revelation, mystery, or genuine emotional danger. He's not wrong. These are popcorn flicks. They're not high art. They're fun. I mean, I enjoy them, but I also enjoy movies, you know, that are actually cinema. Two hours later. Nothing is at risk, he said. The pictures are made to satisfy a specific set of demands, and they are designed as variations on a finite number of themes. They are sequels in name, but they are remakes in spirit, and everything in them is officially sanctioned because it can't really be any other way. That's the nature of modern film franchises, the director asserted. Market researched, audience tested, vetted, modified, revetted, and remodified until they're ready for consumption. Don't ask questions. Just consume product and then get excited for next product. Oh, don't even get me started on this John Krasinski appearance. This is, this is about as far as I made it. 
in uh, Multiverse of Infinite Sadness. Unsurprisingly, Scorsese is not the only auteur director who has taken issue with the lack of creativity and the disposable nature of the MCU. Asked by the Los Angeles Times during a November interview why he never chose to set foot in Marvel's ever-devolving franchise, Tarantino asserted, you have to be a hired hand to do those things. See, these guys are actual directors that are used to directing. Uh, Marvel directors are always uh, beholden to Kevin Feige. Paging Dr. Faggot! Dr. Faggot! I should go. I'm not a hired hand, he said. I'm not looking for a job. His comments sparking a wave of backlash from Marvel stands. And Marvel stands are the most disgusting, vile pieces of shit on the internet next to Raylos and those people who are enthusiasts of animal bathing. Tarantino elaborated on his point during a later interview with Deadline. Marvel is a company, said the once upon a time in Hollywood director. They have properties. When they hire a director, they're hiring a director to shepherd their property. I'm not looking for a job like that, and I'm not even eligible for a job like that. Raising concerns about creators' rights, Tarantino told the entertainment news outlet, if it was going to work out for me, I would go to Marvel Comics. I would create a character. They would have no rights over the character other than to publish the book. And then when the book became successful, I would make a movie and they would have no rights over the movie other than the privilege of releasing it. Further expounding on his disdain for the MCU's active assault on creativity during a November 21st appearance on comedian Tom Segura's Two Bears, One Cave podcast, Tarantino, Tarantino posited that the part of marvelization of Hollywood is that you have all these actors who have become famous playing these characters, but they're not movie stars, right? He asked Segura, Captain America is the star, or Thor is the star. I mean, I'm not the first person to say that. I think it's been said a zillion times, you know, but, you know, it's like, you know, these franchise characters that become a star. He's not wrong. Look at Chris Evans and Chris Hemsworth's records outside of Marvel. What, what have they done that has been relevant, noteworthy, or otherwise? Nothing. Yeah. What? Let me finish recording this and I will. Yes? I will in just a minute. Predictably, Tarantino's refusal to praise such moments as Yelena's disregard for the seriousness of the Red Room's forced hysterectomies as the pinnacle of modern storytelling only led to more outrage. What are you going to do? Eventually taking note of the fervor, Lou seized on a chance to clout chase and took his personal Twitter on November 22nd to refute the director's criticisms by accusing them of essentially being nostalgic for racism. What a stupid son of a bitch. Because of course they are. If they hearken for the days of anything other than 2016, you're a racist. Yep. If only the gatekeeper to movie stardom came from Tarantino and Scorsese, I would never have had the opportunity to lead a 400 million plus movie, wrote Shang-Chi actor, implying the two directors would have personally dismissed his career because of his Chinese ethnicity. Stupid! You're so stupid! I'm in awe of their filmmaking genius, he added. They are transcendent auteurs, but they don't get to point their nose at me or anyone. Shut up, bitch! Just for the record, Simu Lu, your $400 million movie that you led, that you're touting, $432 million worldwide against a budget of $200 million, using a two and a half times multiplier, that means your movie didn't even break even. So I would tread lightly when you're, you know, touting your financial uh, your your ability to be a financial draw when you are anything but a financial draw nobody knew who you were outside of kim's convenience before this and nobody cares now because your movie wasn't good and you're just an idiot oh my god who the hell cares the unbearably smug actor then turned to laughably praise disney who's the asshole the same company that in recent years alone have shrunk John Boyega's fin on the Chinese posters for Star Wars, The Force Awakens, and ensures that the on-screen diversity they claim to champion can be easily cut for foreign markets as the shining paragon of inclusion and representation that they are. You've got to do better. Yeah, you can see there's uh, the U.S. poster, there's the Chinese poster. Where's fin? Oh, Finn's down there. You're like, oh, wait, wait, wait. well, okay. Okay, Disney, but I'm a racist for not liking your, your movie. All right, okay, I feel you, Disney. Oh. No movie 
movie studio is or ever will be perfect, he proclaimed. But I'm proud to work with one that has made sustained efforts to improve diversity on screen by creating heroes that empower and inspire people of all communities everywhere. Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. No, they've made homogenized entertainment. They've turned something that was really fun into a fucking gender studies and fucking uh, critical race theory fucking training seminar. That's basically what Marvel is now. You have done that yourself. I love the Golden Age too, self-aggrandizingly asserted, said the same man who has sought to disingenuously frame his appearance in a mass market Disney product as the first true representation of Asian individuals in media. But it was white as hell. Like, I'm sorry. And, and I responded to this and I quote tweeted him on this one. In conclusion to his thoughts, Lou attempted to puff his chest again to those who disagreed with him by playing the internet tough guy, pathetically sharing a gif of himself as Shang-Chi preparing for a fight alongside the caption, bracing for Luther internet trolls like. And it's worthwhile to note that Minions, The Rise of Gru, did beat Shang-Chi by more than double at the box office and beat Thor, Love and Thunder by more than 200 million, so. This is far from the first time Lou's virtue signaling has led him to make a fool of himself in public. In light of the news that the Canadian television series, which he gained fame and attention for, Kim's Convenience, had been canceled by the CBC, Lou said he resented the show's overwhelmingly white producers because they did not take input on the script from actors. So the show gets canceled, and then he starts throwing producers under the bus. Fuck that puto! It was always my understanding that the lead actors were the stewards of the character and would grow to have more creative insight as the show went on, wrote the actor in a June 2021 Facebook post. This was not the case on our show, which was doubly confusing because our producers are overwhelmingly white. Oh, no. He was a retard. And we were a cast of Asian Canadians who had a plethora of lived experiences to draw from and offer to the writers. But we were often told that the next season's plans mere days before we were start to set shooting. There was deliberately not a leeway given to us. <laughs> Two months later, Lou took disingenuous issue with the comments made by Disney, we should say then, Disney CEO Bob Chapek during the company's Q3 earnings call, where in discussion of the decision to release Shang-Chi and Free Guy to Disney Plus after only 45 days in theaters, the executive opined on Shang-Chi, we think it's actually going to be an interesting experiment for us. Though Chapek was clearly referring to Shang-Chi's experimental release schedule, Lou accused that the CEO was using the term in reference to the fact that the film was Asian-centric. How fucking stupid and self-victimizing are you, Simu Lou? Every action that you take just answers that question further for us. So thank you for being an idiot. And if you guys want to look back at what was said, if you're not familiar with it, I'll link my videos that I did on Simu Lou uh, in that situation with Bob uh, Chapek in the de uh, description to the video just so if you kind of need context if you're not familiar with it if you're new here you can go and look back it'll be there uh, good video check it out and I'm not just saying that it's literally I, I don't make bad videos like I, I really don't not to pat myself on the back like Barry Horowitz but I don't make bad videos we are not an experiment he tweeted we are the underdog the underestimated he continued we are the ceiling breakers we are the celebration of culture and joy that will persevere after an embattled year we are the surprise I'm fired the fuck up to make history on September 3rd join us you are one pathetic loser we're the glass ceiling breakers yeah, Aquafina and Simu Lu are just setting trends for Asian actors. As noted above, just a few days after his bad faith interpretation of Chapek's words, Lu has also boasted his performance as Shang-Chi had finally given audiences an aspirational Asian character to look up to. <laughs> oh, it's a beautiful and exciting new origin story for this character that a lot of the world hasn't heard of before, Lou told Total Film Magazine at the Marvel Films red carpet premiere, and as it means that kids growing up today will have what I didn't, which are characters that are aspirational, that can also reflect their lived experience. <laughs> what a story, Mark. Doubling down on his self-positioning as the savior of Asian representation, Lou would assert in an August 2021 Reddit AMA, 
In 2012, when I first started out, I thought maybe if I worked really, really hard, I could be a guy that gets beaten up by one of the main characters one day. That was the pinnacle for actors that look like me, he bizarrely claimed, ignoring the decades worth of Asian cinema and television stars whose native works became Western fan favorites. I'm ashamed to say I put on the most ridiculous and offensive accents in the past, all because I thought it was more important to give the casting director what they wanted than to be my true self. Well, it is called acting, son, and you should try it sometime. You might actually... No, you're not going to be good at it. You're a fucking idiot. You're a puppet. You're literally a meat puppet that gets paid to read, memorize, repeat. Read, memorize, repeat. That's all you do. He continued, over time, as I toiled about in the industry and struggled to find my footing, I started to realize all the ways of the industry discriminated against us and that what we needed to become the masters of our own narrative because the way that we were being portrayed was not positive or authentic. That's why representation behind the camera is just important as in front, he concluded. No, the ability to check boxes is not a fucking, um, it's not an award. It's not something to be patted on the back for. Merit-based hiring, unless you're doing something that specifically calls for somebody, of course, perhaps the most damning of his character and interestingly, a point of fact in which is yet to be seriously addressed by either himself or any Disney representative was Lou's penning as of a self-described sympathetic post towards those, you can read the word right there, starts with P and ends with O files and we're not talking about Irish. Responding to a BBC article discussing an effort by German therapists to encourage self-recognized those people to seek treatment, Lou opined in the Reddit sub uh, Reddit World News subreddit. I recently did a show in which I played a one of those people and did a significant amount of research, clinical studies, mind you, not the method stuff, which is fucking disgusting to even think about, on the disorder and how it's perceived in media. In the end, the role completely changed the way I look at that and has made me much more sympathetic to anyone who was born with those urges. Holy shit! If you didn't think Simu Lu was a complete piece of shit before this, that sentence right there, much more sympathetic to anyone who's born with those urges. Simu Lu has said after that role, he's been much more sympathetic to them. Just quit being a cunt. Fuck you, buddy. And Disney will keep hiring this guy and putting him in family movies for kids, right? Marvel movies are for kids, right? You out of your goddamn mind. Son of a bitch! Son of a bitch! From a biological standpoint, it's no different than being gay. Wow! What? Wow, that is completely different. That is completely different. And he's a noted biologist too, apparently, Simu Lu is. A small mutation in the genome that defines our sexual preferences, he continued. Depending on what area of the world you were born and what time, it may also have been a perfectly acceptable thing to act on those urges. Oh! And he just keeps digging himself. The hole just keeps getting dug deeper. Now, we all know that taking advantage of minors is wrong, the actor clarified. Disgusting and vile, even. But with the exception of Germany, we are going about it completely, completely the wrong way. It's like we have... It's like we having learned... At Okay, this is bad editing in this article. It's like we haven't learned anything by studying homosexuality. We're talking about exploring the same cures to that as we were about homosexuality 20 years ago, a la conversion therapy and whatnot. Um, this guy's fucking sick and fuck him. He's garbage. And fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. This Simulu is absolute trash. For you to sit there and think that these two things go together, that they are somehow similar is, and you'll see people in the gay community that are talking about how they hate that these sick fucks who want to take advantage of kids and underage people are trying to glom on to their movement. And that's fucking disgusting. That is disgusting and it's wrong and those people deserve to be well. You're a disease and I'm the cure. As part of my research, I discovered that these people literally have nowhere to turn, nor should they. They should all be in cells or in hell. I'll see you in hell, Costanza. Even non-offending those people, he said, they cannot seek treatment in most parts of the world because the therapist or psychiatrist would legally be required to report any individuals they suspected would pose a threat to minors. Well, they deserve to be incarcerated. That's preventative justice right there, and you're saving children from being assaulted by sick pieces of garbage. 
Lou continued on message boards and social media. I see the same defense time and time again. What if it was your daughter? Well, I take their point, but I would like to ask, what if it was your child who became, came to you and was confused about being one of those? I'd turn him in because I wouldn't want him to hurt anybody. That's exactly what the fuck I'd do because I wouldn't want him to hurt anybody. Simple as that. That's the one that's inexcusable. That's inexcusable. The study I read suggested as many as 1% of the population may have some degree of those tendencies, he concluded. If this is true, I certainly hope the rest of the world follows Germany's lead. No. <laughs> and with my background, I'll never follow Germany's lead in anything. They can fuck off. Ultimately, Lou signed off. Actor played a... That for a TV show, did research, discovered being a that, not so different than being gay. Everyone deserves sympathy, not black and white. Marvel's latest non-consequential outing, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, is now playing. So there you have it, friends. Simu Lu at it again, being stupid on Twitter and getting pushback for it as he should, especially towards the end of that article. It took a real dark turn in his comments on, you know, playing one of those people uh, that we can't talk about on YouTube. You gotta you gotta let the people know what's going on, especially when it comes to deal with these idiot Hollywood celebrities that work for billion dollar global corporations that have monopolies on media and control. Most of what you and your family see and consume as far as entertainment media goes when they're supporting things like that and they're making stupid statements about directors being racist when they themselves are projecting garbage onto the world. It's your turn, as I said. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If today's the day I've earned it, please subscribe to the channel. Ding the bell for notifications so you know when we go live with one of our three weekly live streams. Five, if you're a channel member, you can join for $2.99 or $4.99 a month. I'm Etepo Kuin of The Place to Be Reviews. I've been here with all of you. If I don't see you, have a great day, a pleasant tomorrow. I'll catch you on the next one, and I hope you have a sincerely happy Thanksgiving, ladies and gentlemen. It's better to burn out than to fade away. I could do this all. Fade out.